Hi, um, I'm Rob, and this is a brief explanation of how I'm making lenses using the Autodesk T-Splines plugin within Rhinoceros 3D. Um, now, if you've never used Rhino before, this is uh, going to be difficult, but the basic premise is that I'm using a few plugins. I'm using a plugin called Neon, which uh, is capable of doing ray tracing within the, within the viewport. Because normally, you know, the Rhino environment looks a lot like this. Um, and with Neon, you're able to actually simulate the effects of refraction through different materials. Um, so I have a scan of myself um, in this region here. And I'm using that to test how the lenses are behaving. Um, it's loading up, give it a second. And uh, over here, I have some photos I took through, uh, through Photo Booth, holding up a printout of a checkerboard, because I'm trying to replicate the nine Photo Booth filters uh, using, using lenses. Um, so what T-splines are is it's a paradigm for making really smooth uh, geometries in uh, 3D modeling. Uh, for example, using T-splines, I'm able to um, make really smooth bulges in this. And using the rendering engine, I'm able to simulate how that will affect the look of my face. as well as um, how it might look within an environment. Um, so lenses that I've already made um, include this one, uh, which is pretty fun. Gonna zoom out a little. Um, so where you stand, or in this case where I put the camera, has a huge impact on the effects of the lens, as well as how far away the lens is from the person. Um, this one makes me look like a blockhead. Let's see what else we got. We got um, this one, which shrinks things down quite a bit. That was a fun one. That was qu quick and easy. Um, this is pretty similar to the last one. I made a pair of sunglasses that make your eyes really big. And um, these are them. And when I printed these, uh, the effects were really similar, and this is what made me think that this was a workflow that was going to work. Um, so yeah, these are the sunglasses. And, you know, they have... They can make anything bigger, but they really are the funniest on the eyes. I also have... Um, this lens, which I programmatically uh, turned uh, added facets using what's called a Voronoi function, and that uh, kind of acts as like a, an eye replicator. I think that one's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and this is one I'm really excited about. This is a pair of prisms that make your eyes into mouths. Um, and that's like a pair of sunglasses. And uh, I hope these ones work. I haven't tried to print any prisms yet. Um, so yeah, I've been using lots of tools um, to, to model uh, these facial distortion lenses.
and it's been it's been a fun. I've learned. Oh, here's a here's just an ordinary lens. Give it a second. So this is a lens with a 40 inch focal length and a 10 inch diameter. Um, and it's just an ordinary plano convex lens, meaning that the back is flat and the front is convex. And uh, this is another lens that I've already fabricated, so I was, I'm able to test the effects. Um, the, I'm able to easily test the, the effects of the virtual and the, and the real. And I found that they're really close. And you can see that the far away things become, you know, upside down, this man in green who's quite far away, just becomes small and upside down, but things that are um, at the focal point or in front of the focal point uh, actually become larger. Um, so yeah, that's, that's mostly my workflow. For, for modeling the, uh, the photo booth ones, I, I, put, I put the test pattern in the, in the shot, so I have a floating I have a floating uh, little picture of a <laughs> right at my nose. A little photo of using the picture frame command of a checkerboard, and that way, when I'm modeling, for example, when I'm modeling the stretch, I can compare and contrast it. Uh, you know versus a stretch over here and a stretch over here. As you can see, um, they're pretty similar. They're similar enough. And at different zoom levels, they're more and less similar. Um, the dolly zoom command is one that I like a lot because it just drastically changes um, the pixelation you're seeing is just a is just how the ray tracer works. It'll, it's not it's not the video quality. It's what I'm seeing on my screen also. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see the similarities. The how it's big in the horizontal and big in the vertical, and then small in the in the corners here. Um, yeah, I mean, largely if if you wanna if you wanna try your hand at this, that I'd I'd watch all of the the T splines videos that that are on the Autodesk website because um, learning T-splines is, is not easy, but it's it's thing I'd recommend. It's really good for making swoopy geometries, like things like bicycle helmets or, or toilets or, in, in turns out, lenses, you know. Makes a very effective and easy to polish uh, freeform surface. Well, uh, thanks for listening, and I hope that, uh, that clears some things up.